for this morning's scriptures is going to be from Psalms number 135, verses 1 through 3. And me, myself, y'all, I like to make habits for myself. So, every time we hear the word praise, we're going to say, Glory. Glory. <laughs> praise. Glory. Ye the Lord. Praise. Glory. Ye the name of the Lord. Praise. Glory. Him, O ye servants of the Lord. Ye that stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God, praise Glory. the Lord for the Lord is good. Amen. Sing praises Glory. unto his name, for it is pleasant. Thank you very much. Amen. Praise God. How many of you all know that God is a way maker? He's a way maker. He made a way for us. Somebody said he took three nails and two sticks and made a bridge so we could get back to him. He's a way maker. God is a way maker. Somebody said this morning he took his blood. I started thinking they talked about when a soldier pierced him in the side and that blood shot out. Can you imagine the blood of Jesus splashing you in the face? I can only imagine just a drop just to be able to touch just a, a little bit of his blood. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. The visual picture. Oh, praise God. You a way maker. And so we just want to tell him thank you this morning. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are here. And you're moving in our midst. We worship you, oh, God. Yeah, we worship you.
again, Lord, thanking you for your many blessings which you have bestowed upon us. Lord, you've been merciful and you've been kind and we realize, Lord, more and more each day that if it had not been for the Lord on our side, when men rose up against us, where would we be? We thank you, Lord, for we can lean and depend on you, and we can call upon your name any time of the day or the night. We pray, Lord, that we will stir up the gift that is on the inside of us. We pray, Lord, that we will not be ashamed to own you before men, that we will be able to acknowledge you and to tell a dying world that I know that my Redeemer lives because he lives inside of me. Lord, we invite you into this service, realizing, Lord, that you're already in this service. But, Lord, we want you to feel welcome. We want you to feel, Lord, that we need you in this place. We need you in our lives to direct our paths and, Lord, to lead us and to guide us from one degree of faith unto another. We pray, Lord, that we will have that love that runs from heart to heart and from breast to breast, that we may be able to feel each other's care and each other's cross to bear. For we realize, then, Lord, that we're not in this race by ourselves, but there are other people, other Christians, other men, women, boys, and girls that don't mind suffering for your name's sake. For we realize, Lord, that, that uh, a fair weather Christian is all right long as everything is going well and we can say, I know you live, but are we the type of people that when times are going wrong, when times are going bad, when things are not going our way, can we still say that I know that he can and I know that he will, and if he you don't, we know that you are able, for you promise never to leave us nor forsake us. We pray, Lord, that your word go forth in this service, that praises go up so high and so joyful in this place that you will come to see about your people. These and all blessings I ask in Christ Jesus' name. Amen, and thank God. You 
deserve the glory and the honor. I lift my hands in worship. I bless your holy name. You deserve the glory and the find it in the hymn, hymn number 137. light and 
and the burdens of my heart rolls away. It was then by faith I received my sight, and now I'm happy all the day. said amen amen it was at the cross amen good morning announcements we'd like to welcome everybody back into the house of the Lord after having work week and we rested on Saturday, and now we're worshiping here on Sunday. I'm glad to be back here. I've been out a while. I had said thank you once, but I don't think you could thank a person enough. I appreciate your prayers. Our family does. Continue to keep us in your prayers, and we'll do the same for you. Remember Breaking Chains Conference next Saturday, April the 13th at New Beginning Church at 8 a.m. and the Refresh Women's Conference at New Life Church Friday and Saturday, April 19th through 20th, 20 and 24. Let's get excited with the makeup artist, Niosha, who will host our first pamper party. So ladies, let's get ready. This will be next Saturday, April 13th at noon at the Mount Surreal campus. You who have registered and reserved your seat, yay, Saturday is a busy day. Celebration of Black Graduates' first event celebrating young people of color graduating from high school in 2024. Information meeting April 20th, 2024. You may register online See the flyer on the screen. Okay. Well, we'll tell you about the flyer later. And in the hospitality area and or contact Dr. Carmen Williams. This event, however, will take place Friday, May 10th, 2024 at Blinn College Student Center Building. Mm -hmm. Adult uh, the next announcement, the adult choir is invited to sing at St. John AME at 6.30 p.m. also on April 20th. April 27th at 9 a.m. we will have the NACA presentation. This is your year to become a homeowner and get all the information. Fill out the application form and be on your way to creating generational wealth. We would like all first time visitors to please stand. I have one card. I have Amber, would you like to completely introduce yourself and tell us where you're from and glad to have you with us today. Amen, amen. We thank you for coming and enjoy the services with us, and please come back again and 
tell some of your friends about the good time, the blessing that you're going to receive today from Mount Rose. These have been your announcements, greetings. Please govern yourselves accordingly. Thank you. I think this is the period where we greet each other. If everyone can please stand and greet someone. Excuse me, brother, one announcement. I'm so sorry. Sitting up here. You know, I told you when you hit those 60s and 70s, man. I'm getting close. Anyway, <laughs> result of the last quarterly business meeting, we welcome two board members, Sister Stephanie Marinthi and Brother Cecil Welch. Webster. Have my tongue. Also, the 2024 budget was approved. Now, these have been your announcements. <laughs> Please govern yourselves accordingly. Stand at this point. Say good morning to the person next to you. Greet your friend.
your grace. I'm here because of your grace. Lord, when I was sinking deep in sin, Lord, you stepped in and gave me a peace within oh i'm here lord i'm here because of your grace your grace covers me it covers me your grace set me free your grace Just because of your grace, it's all because of you. I'm here, I'm here because, all because of your grace. of your grace it's all because it's all because of you oh I'm here I'm here because, because all because of your grace I'm here because of your grace oh all because of your grace. When I was sick, you healed me. When I was lost, Lord, you saved me. Oh, I'm here. Lord, I'm here because of your grace. Your 
say good morning again to all of you I've not had the pleasure of speaking to directly we thank God for your presence here today and uh, we declare that God is deserving of all glory all honor all praise belongs to him amen to God be the glory our heads are going to bow now, and one of these brothers is going to offer a prayer. Father God, we pray that you will bless the offer. We pray that this offer will be used in the manner in which it was given. We continuously uplift your name. Father God, bless those that gave, bless those that had the desire and had it. We pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. The church said, Amen. And you 
your heart is filled with despair. Remember God cares. And when you're in doubt and you can't find your way up, He will see you through.
church say amen. Uh, our singers are on fire for the Lord today. Amen. We thank God for, for that reality. Amen. The blood indeed still works. Amen. And I say hello again to all of you who are here in this house and we acknowledge those who are with us online uh, today. We're blessed of the Lord. Uh, to be uh, here and there, uh, given the world and all that goes on in the world. Sunday morning is a special time. Sunday is the Lord's Day. Always was since the advent of Christ and always will be. And so we, we bless the Lord today. Amen. Amen. We want to go to the Lord in prayer now and um, we would mention that uh, own sister Margaret Harrison is uh, yet hospitalized in temple and we're in continuing prayerfulness uh, for her and there are others uh, who made special concerns known to me and some have made those concerns known to you all asking that we keep them uh, lifted up in prayer amen I'm mighty glad that God's favor has always been and will always be on his people and on his church Lord I hear Showers of blessings. Thou art scattering, full and free. Amen. Showers, thirsty souls refreshing. Let some drops. Fall on you and on me. Amen. Lord, I 
Bahia Showers of blessings Thou art scattering Full and free Showers the thirsty Souls refreshing Let some drops fall for me. Even me, even, even me, even me, Lord. Even, even me <laughs> Let some drops Let some drops Let some drops fall Fall on Fall on me Pass me not, O oh, gentle Savior, sinful though my heart may be. I am longing for the favor whilst thou art blessing let the drops go oh lord <laughs> fall on me you ought to raise your hand with me right now and say even me I dare you to do it even me even me even me, even, even me. Let some drops, let some drops, let some drops, let some drops, let some drops fall, fall on fall on me. Gracious God, our Father, we come, God, as we have already presented ourselves today uh, in an attitude of reverence, in an attitude of gratitude. Our hearts, O oh God, are filled with thankfulness unto thee. As we recognize, O oh God, that you are God and you are the only true and living God. Our hearts are filled with joy, God, because we know that our God is the only God who knows all things, and the only God who has all power, and the only God who is everywhere present. Our hearts, O oh God, are rejoicing today because our God is the same God who so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And they call his name Jesus. That would be that same name, that same Jesus, that the choir, oh Lord, so beautifully and so profoundly called out today, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is his name so God we come <laughs> we come saying thank you Lord we come blessing your name and blessing oh God you for blessings that you provide in our lives God you know all that there is to know about all of us you know where we're strong you know where we're weak 
Lord, you know everything there is to know about us. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that whatever our needs and concerns would be, that they would be addressed, O oh God, by thee. Because if that be the case, Lord, we know that uh, it will all be done uh, according to your will and according to your way. Yeah, another way of putting that, Lord, would be have your way. Have your way, O oh God, in our lives, O oh Lord, as we go from day to day. We pray, God, for those who are gathered in the sanctuary today and those who are with us online. God, you know where they are. You know what their concerns are, Lord. Please, sir, in the name of Jesus, continue, God, to meet the needs. We pray, God, for those who are confined uh, in varying facilities, Lord, we pray for those even who are behind prison walls. We pray, God, for our brothers and our sisters who are caught up in uh, war-torn places right now. Lord, in the name of Jesus, grant, O oh God, and you already are, but continue to grant, grant relief, God. Help the children and the families. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, we call upon the faithful, the church, to do more than we're doing, to have a stronger sense of conviction and a stronger sense of determination, Lord, to be about those things that you've assigned us to be about in this mean and cruel world. Cause our hearts, oh God, and our minds now to be rightly focused such that as we open the book, Lord, and as we look to hear from you, I pray, God, that thou would let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thine sight. In the name, <laughs> in the name, in the name, oh, in the name, in the name of the Lord Christ, the church said amen. Give us a hymn, Bro Curry, and we'll join you in singing. We'll rise to our feet and sing. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Saved a wretch like me. Sing out, church. Church said, Amen. Amen. While you're yet standing, go with me in your Bible. Firstly, I would ask that you locate uh, in the book of uh, Philippians, the fourth chapter, uh, that eighth verse, if you'll go there. This is where Apostle Paul gives us some things to think about as we go from day to day in our lives, as we live. Paul says in that eighth verse, Philippians 4 and 8, meditate on these things. Hmm? It's finally, whatever things are true, 
whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report. If there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, Paul says, meditate on these things. Good words, amen. Good words. You may go ahead and have your seat. We're going to reference in our message here today uh, some passages in the book of Exodus. That would be Exodus, the third chapter, uh, verses 1 through 12. Uh, and then we want to come back to uh, the book of uh, Philippians and go to the 13th verse. Amen. Can you, can you be with me in this? We ask for your prayers here today. And we thank God. We thank God that he continues to uh, love his church. He won't do anything else but love his church. Amen. I'm glad about that. I'm mighty, mighty glad about that. Mighty glad about that. In that uh, Exodus uh, book, third chapter there, um, th this is that story of Moses, and you know the story, the burning bush, and it's about Moses having made excuses to God, and, and God called him out to do certain kinds of things, especially in the matter of uh, delivering uh, God's people from bondage. And it goes on to talk about the exchanges, if you will, between uh, Moses and, and the Lord uh, and God. And uh, Moses' mental uh, and uh, physical uh, behavior here, he, he, he offered up a lot of reasons and excuses as to why he ought not be the one God calls to do what God calls him to do. Amen. That's the backdrop of what we're talking about here today as it relates to that uh, passage in Exodus. We want to tag this, and I just kind of felt like it would be a good tag. We want to tag this, don't say you can't, unless you really can't. Amen. Hmm? Somebody ought to uh, perhaps find that as thought-provoking as I find it. Hmm? Don't say you can't unless you can't. Don't say you can't unless you can't. Amen. All right. that's, a, that's a sermon, isn't it? <laughs> isn't that a sermon already? Amen. Amen. Y'all might recall, those of you who've studied the word, and that would be most of us, you will recall who this Moses was. Um, uh, in those days, he was 80 years old at the time that uh, God uh, called him. He was 80 years old. We got, uh, well, I don't want to do that because I'd have to include the other one. Uh, I started to say we got president in that vicinity. He, he's vying to be president again, but uh, in, in the manner of uh, equal time, I, I ought not to talk about that. But he's old. By his own declaration, he's old. Amen. Amen. He's old. I'm old. Some of you are older and older. And Moses was 80 years old. At the time, he was a fugitive from justice, wanted uh, for murder in Egypt, uh, the very place God is sending him to do his work. Uh, he, he was an educated man, uh, but that was over 40 years ago. He had uh, been well connected in political circles of that day. And but that, too, had been a long time ago. Yet when it came time for God to send a deliverer to Israel, this is exactly the person he chose for the job. You do understand, don't you, my brother and my sister, that God can choose whomever he pleases, amen, to do what he willed to be done, amen, he, whatever he wills to be done, amen. That, that, that's a nugget for us. To us humans, uh, that God would call Moses wouldn't make much sense. Uh, but to God, it was all part of a great plan. And I would say to the church today, and to all of us who are within 
the realm of my voice here. We need as Christian brothers and sisters to be careful uh, about being so uh, quick to uh, make an excuse as to why we can't do <laughs> in service to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Y'all are listening to me here today, and I'm going to talk a long time. I got out of here, got us out of here last week around 12, 12.05, and y'all blessed me for that. And, <laughs> and it's going to be hopefully the same today. But all the excuses we make, all the excuses we offer God, when God has purposed uh, in his uh, intentions for us that we would uh, do this, that, and the other uh, in service to him, hmm? amen, we make excuses. Not only in terms of being about what God purposes uh, in our lives as relates to the church specifically, but also in terms of what we're doing in our communities. Hmm? Amen. Some of us, some few of us, are trying to show up and, and, and find ourselves on boards and this, that, and the other. But the masses of us <laughs> will offer an excuse. And one of the excuses that I find so, 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 so tired and so worn out and so lame is that they're going to do whatever they want to do anyway. Hmm? Hmm? If you, if you say you can't, but you really can, are you listening to me here? For just a few minutes here today, not going to tarry, not going to tarry. Moses, uh, <laughs> Uh, gives us optic lessons in terms of how some folk uh, respond to God when God has blessed them. Hmm? I mean immeasurably. When he continues to be uh, in their worlds, in their lives, and providing for them and blessing them. Uh, so many of us will still offer up excuses. And God, I can hear them rolling around in my head right now, you know. Uh, 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 I this and I that and, 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 and I'm, 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 you know, I'm tired now. All kinds of excuses. Moses made the excuse of inability. <laughs> Tried to, now God has called him to deliver his folk. And how dare he declare to God that I don't, I don't have the ability to do it. Don't you understand, Moses, that when God calls you to a work, God will equip you. <laughs> Am I right about it? Am I right about it? He will equip you <laughs> for that work. But that was Moses' first concern, is that he is a nobody and is therefore unqualified to go to Pharaoh and demand the release of God's folk. Be careful, my brothers and my sisters, who are people of great faith, faith in the Lord Christ, that we not be so prone to offer excuses. The church, statistically, even though there may be uh, 2,000 members in a given congregation, there is that circle of a few folk <laughs> Amen. who step up. They're called the faithful few. Amen. But what about the masses? Maybe in a kind of way here I'm making an appeal uh, 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 on behalf of the Lord Christ that some of us in our congregation need to rethink <clears throat> where we are. We need to get involved. Hmm? Amen. And don't use excuses. What is my title here? Don't say you can't unless you can't. Are you listening to me here? Unless you can't. I know it's contraction here, unless you cannot. 
But I do it that way to make the point. Don't say you can't unless you can't. Why? Because if God has purposed it in you to do, then you ought to be found <laughs> prayerfully trying to get it done, having asked him to give you the guidance that you need to get it done, whatever it is. Moses used the excuse of uh, inability. He also used uh, the cousin of that particular excuse. It's called inadequacy. And Moses said, Lord, you're calling on me to go in and to speak on your behalf, oh Lord, to folk who have been in bondage, bondage in Pharaoh's Egypt for a long time, and I, I'm slow of tongue. I, I got a speech impediment here. I can't, I can't talk right. And, how many times have I heard folk in the congregation say, uh, leadership means that you've got to be able to talk and uh, to speak and, and to articulate and all of that. Well, stop doing that to yourself. <laughs> Do you hear me? I know I'm right about it. The excuse, the excuse of inadequacy. Uh, Moses <laughs> talked about the fact that he was not fluent in speaking, he was not an eloquent speaker, and all this, that, and the other. This one Moses claimed is really troublesome and problematic. Uh, it has to do with the excuse, the excuse of inferiority. You know what, Vanessa? My mama told us, and some of y'all's mamas and daddies told you the same thing. There ain't nobody in the world any better than you. Didn't they tell you that? I know they did. Huh? There's nobody any better than you. And yet some of us, oh Lord, are constrained by this psychological and emotional uh, notion that we are inferior. Uh, 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 the book gave us this phrase, inferiority complex. What do you mean, inferiority complex, huh? What's up with that? It's a matter of how you see yourself. And as a believer in the Lord Christ, it's a matter of how strongly you know who you are in Christ Jesus. I feel like saying again, Sister Tish, Mama told me, boy, <laughs> there ain't nobody in the planet any better than you. And she said, nobody. Nobody. We have varying strengths and abilities and all of that, but fundamentally speaking, she said, nobody. Any better than, did somebody say amen to what mama said? Did, some, did more than one person get that message from mama? Or, or, or from your daddy? Or from grandma? Let me rush on here to another passage in our uh, presentation today, and it has to do with that fourth chapter uh, in the book of Philippians. Uh, the 13th verse there uh, where the Apostle Paul, I'm almost done here now, where the Apostle Paul is writing uh, to church folk at Caesarea Philippi, and he's writing to church folk today. And he says, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Somebody ought to say amen. If you believe that, you ought to say, I know that's right. I know that's right. That I can do all things through him, through the Lord, who is the source of my strength. Are you listening to me here? Ah. Uh, talks about the Lord Christ being the source of the believer's strength. We have to understand, though, if we're going to be biblically correct about it, Paul is not teaching that, uh, that, 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 that we can do any and everything. We all have, oh Lord, our strengths and our lesser strengths. 
But what Paul is saying is that given where I've been and what I've gone through and all of what's going on in my life, the setbacks and the hills I've had to climb, oh Lord, he says that through all of that, I discovered that the Lord Christ is the one who had my back. And therefore, Paul was able to say, I know how to be all right when things are going well. Somebody ought to shout right there. And I know how to be all right when things are not going so well. Paul says, I've been up and I've been down, but through it all, <laughs> but through it all, <laughs> uh, I've, I've had at my back uh, the Lord Christ who promised never to leave me and never to forsake me. My help, you see, Paul says, coming from the Lord. And therefore, in him, I'm going to make it. Am I right about this now? <laughs> in him, I'm going to make it. The road gets rough sometimes. Am I talking about it here? Uh, the going gets tough sometimes. The hills, uh, so the song says, get hard to climb. But through it all, through it all, do you not know, and Paul helps us with this, uh, do you not know that your attitudinal position on whatever your difficulties may be, uh, has a lot to do with how well you handle it. Am I right about it? If you can't say, if you can't say, bless the Lord, when you get up in the morning, then you got an attitude problem. Of course, the fact of the matter is that the Lord got you up. Amen. And that was Paul's, that was Paul's word to the church. He said, y'all think y'all been through some stuff. Y'all ain't, Paul said, y'all have not, y'all don't have a clue as to what <laughs> I've been through. Paul said, y'all don't know what it is to not have uh, uh, a, a, a night where I slept all night long. Paul said, y'all don't understand. You haven't been there. You don't know what it's about. Paul said, you've not been out on that, out on that ship, out on that water there when uh, shipwreck time came and hell <laughs> on. Made it back to the shore and snakes got after me. Paul said, y'all just don't know. But it says, through it all, through it all, my help <laughs> came from the Lord. He has sustained me <laughs> and maintained me. And every day gives me the grace that I need to keep on keeping on. Somebody ought to say amen. Somebody ought to say, man, it gets rough sometimes, doesn't it? <laughs> it? It gets hard sometimes. Sometimes things, uh, uh, I want to say go to hell. Sometimes things get hellish in the home, and oh, Lord, uh, folk got hell in them, and they claim you got hell in you, and all kind of stuff. <laughs> but Paul said, you don't know my story. You don't know my story. But since the subject is on the table now, Paul says, I let you in on a little bit of my story. Paul says that I've been, oh Lord, I've been up, oh Lord, and, and I've been down, almost leveled to the ground. But through it all, <laughs> the Lord cries him, uh-huh, held my hand. Who is he? He's God's son. He is the sinner savior. Uh-huh, he's the centerpiece <laughs> of civilization. Do you know him today? Do you know him today? Don't you try to fool me now. Do you know him today? He stands alone in himself. 
He's august. He's unique. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He's supreme. He's preeminent. He's the loftiest idea. In Do you know of whom Paul spoke? He was talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. Who went all the way to Calvary, yeah, Lord, <laughs> and died <laughs> uh -huh, for you and for me. Can't you see him? <laughs> As they marched him up Golgotha's hill that day, blood of redemption <laughs> came streaming down. <laughs> He has suffered on that old rugged cross, and now he's on his way. Thank you, God. He's on his way to Calvary, where they will hang him high, and they will, oh Lord, stretch him wide. Blood will come streaming down. They sang the song earlier today. Oh, the blood. Oh, the blood. Oh, the blood. Oh, the blood. What about the blood? The blood still works. Took him down and laid him in a borrowed grave. <laughs> uh -huh, I'm still, Lord, just that Friday night, uh, and it was there the next day, but early, early Sunday morning, early Sunday morning, do y'all still know that to be so? Early Sunday morning. The old church, uh, when the preacher man got to that point and said early, the old church would join in with him and say early. They say early. And by that time, old Deacon Jones over there would rise through his feet. Uh -huh, and his body would start shaking like that. Early, early, early. Sunday morning, <laughs> got up with all power in his hand. Right now he sits at the right hand side of the Father. And that's why Paul was able to say it. It's why you can declare that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Come against me if you want to. Scandalize my name if you want to. But I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. We had Lord's Supper today, and right now, though, the door of the church is open. Kind of want to hear something, Brother Curry, that's, that's upbeat. Amen. Maybe something like glory, glory. Hallelujah. Since I lay my burdens down. Will you come if you're here? Will you come if you're here? Will you come if you're here? Hallelujah, since I laid my burden down. Sing it again. Glory, glory, hallelujah, since I laid my Glory, glory, hallelujah, since I laid my burden down. Friends don't treat me like they used to since I laid Won't you come? Won't you come? Friends don't treat me like they used to. Oh, since I laid my burdens down, I'm going home to be with Jesus.
Jesus. Oh, yes, I am. Yes, I am. I'm going home to be with Jesus. Oh, God. Sing glory, sing glory, glory. Glory, glory. Oh, yeah, since I laid my Glory, glory, hallelujah, since I laid my burden down, amen, amen, amen. We go now to the Lord's table. Thank God in Christ for the privilege. <laughs> Scriptures that we read uh, typically is in Matthew chapter 26. And we begin our reading typically at the 17th verse, which simply reads, Now on the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying to him, where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he said, go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover. When the evening had come, he sat down with the twelve. Now as they were eating, he said, Assuredly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. And they were exceedingly sorrowful, and each of them began to say to him, Lord, is it I? He answered and said, He who dipped his hand with me in the dish will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes, just as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man <coughs> is betrayed. It would have been good for that man if he had not been born. Then Judas, who was betraying him, answered and said, Rabbi, is it I? He said to him, you have said it. Amen. And amen again. God bless you. God keep you. We come to the table. that the Lord Christ took the bread and he broke it and said to them, take it and eat it. 
It is my body that is given for you. Let us eat of this bread. In like manner, he took the cup. The cup represented his blood, blood of atonement that would be let on Calvary. He said to them, drink ye of this cup, let us do likewise. They sing a hymn and they went out from that place. Amen. Let us stand. Let us go tell the world Let us witness And what Trust in him, surely he will, yes he will, we enter to worship, we depart, sir, let us go. Let us go, tell the world. Tell the world today. We're grateful today to have uh, uh, Blinn College students with us. Amen. We're so grateful to have you with us today. Uh, understand that our door is open here and on the other campus. Come back to worship with us. Amen. And I, I, I would be I don't know what the word is, but I gotta say it. I've been praying for the return of many members of our fellowship. I've been praying hard. And God is answering. He's answering prayer. Amen. Brother and Sister Gail are here today, and I, I give God the glory for their presence here today. And there are others. Amen. My brother right there who's standing in front of Sister Martin, always glad to see you. Amen. 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 I uh, hope that you all have a safe and blessed rest of the day. Now may the grace of God, the love of the Lord Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with each of us until we meet again. Let us all sing.